joining us. And thank you very much for, to our speaker, Miguel Setas, for being with us today and sharing his views. I just wanted to say a few words about, uh, about Catholic Lisbon and the importance of sustainability and societal impact for our school. Uh, we are putting uh, sustainability topics and teaching and research at the center of what we are doing within the school because we feel it's our responsibility to the world and to society to do so. Uh, it's part of our role. Uh, the creation of the Center for Responsible Business and Leadership uh, led by Nuno and with the amazing team that you see here is part of that uh, strategy. And these talks uh, are about uh, embedding sustainability in our curriculum, in our thinking, um, and sustainability in practice. So moving from a general concepts about the importance of sustainability to how it's implemented in practice by companies and that's the importance of these um, of these talks about let's talk about sustainability with executives who are living and, and walking uh, the path um, just a word about um, edp brazil um, this is more of a, of a context for you to understand in general portuguese companies have had a really really difficult time in brazil doing business for almost two decades that Portuguese have thought, well, it's really easy because we have an affinity, a cultural, uh, the same language, uh, cultural affinity. It should be easy to go to Brazil and do business and build value in Brazil. Uh, that has not been the case. A lot of uh, very large business groups from Portugal have tried to do so and have failed over the years. And Brazil and the EDP is an exception. So despite the difficulties, uh, they have done an amazing work for a long time that effort and so it's very interesting to understand also uh, how to do business in brazil and specifically how to be very sustainable doing business in brazil which has the, the the worst and the best it has one of some of the most sustainable companies in the world are from brazil some of the disasters that are happening are also in brazil so brazil is a almost a continent a mosaic of a lot of different experiences and i'm really really interested in listening to miguel uh, from his experience in doing business in Brazil in a sustainable way. Thank you, Miguel, for joining us. I'll just pass to Nuno for a couple of words, our uh, head of, of the Center for Responsible Business. And, um, and thank you all for joining us. Okay, Philippe, thank you very much. I mean, this is a blended group. We, we have half of the students and half of the people that are participating in my edition of the Responsible Business. Miguel was also kind enough last year to be to be the speaker at the panel. Uh, you have here, Miguel, some of the participants of this year's edition as well. So uh, it's a nice plan. Miguel, it's great to have you here. I think most of you know Miguel, but let just uh, to, to introduce Miguel. I know Miguel for 20 years now, Miguel. Time flies. It's almost 20 years now. <laughs> I was counting them just before joining. This is almost 20 years. Uh, Miguel is an, a, a chemical engineer. He started in McKinsey, if I remember correctly, Miguel. Then you joined Lisboa Gash as a board member, very young. When I, when I met you, uh, it was at the time. Then Miguel came to Gulf, we worked together. Then Miguel went to, for a short spell, if I remember correctly, to Vodafone. Then you moved to, to CP, the trains, so to be the board member in, in, in CP. Then, and then you joined the EDP. I don't think I'm missing anything. You had a lot of functions in EDP. You have been now for 12 years, I guess, in Brazil. Uh, for the last four or five uh, as a CEO. Uh, and Miguel, a difficult thing to find, which is an engineer with emotional intelligence, which is something which is not, not easy to find. Um, so Miguel, a great professional, great human being. The floor is yours. One, Thank uh, you. very Sorry, one last thing I right. forgot to mention. Uh, should uh, any of the participants have questions during the during the presentation of Miguel, just put them in the chat and we'll address them um, uh, after Miguel's presentation. Go ahead, Miguel. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here with, with you today. Um, Nuno, you were very, gener very generous with me and uh, your words, very kind words and generous. Um, you know that, um, I met Nuno, as he, to he told you, 20 years ago. Uh, he was one of my first uh, bosses, one of my first leaders. Um, and Nuno is one of the persons I, I, I respect the most. 
um, because uh, he's, uh, he's a very coherent guy in terms of what he um, claims and what he defends uh, and, ho and how he acts uh, actually in, 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 uh, in, in real life and in, in, in as a professional. So um, I have a, well, the, the deepest admiration and uh, um, respect for, uh, for Nuno and um, his, his uh, uh, um, challenges and his provocations uh, for me are always um, very, very uh, rewarding. So it's, 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 to me, it's a pleasure, a great pleasure to be here again with you. Uh, I think the work you've been doing, Catholica, and specifically the Center for Responsible Business, um, is really critical in a moment where, when companies are um, confronted with this uh, dilemma of uh, generating value from, from one side and assuring that uh, their impacts uh, in society, in environment, um, are balanced. So we are... Uh, is really an opportunity to reflect, uh, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to give a spoiler on, on on my presentation. But the point for us is that this is no longer an alternative. This is no longer an option um, to be responsible. And I, I go even further. Um, I think what we're talking about is a, a, an ethical, ethical business. Uh, for me, it's uh, the need um, to have a holistic view of our in nature um, as a whole should be not, uh, uh, let's say, a sustainability re recommendation, which is for me, one of uh, the, the most critical issues we have today is that for the time being, I'm sorry, for the time being, um, we, we tend to see uh, sustainability more uh, as a best practice um, rather than an imperative. For me, sustainability seen as a holistic discipline, seen as a, an ethical pa paradigm um, is, is, is an imperative for the next years to come. Um, and, and we have the opportunity now to more than um, to return to a supposed norm normality, which is what we call right now the new normal. I think we have an opportunity, great opportunity um, to avoid the new normality and, and, and to do a, a great reset. say that the, the most re rewarding challenge now, nowadays is um, uh, to avoid the, our tendency uh, to get back to our comfort zones and to get back to what we know um, by heart, the way we do businesses, um, tradi traditionally speaking, and to reinvent the way we do, we do business. So I think your work and Catholica was um, in the forefront of that reflection, in the forefront of that um, uh, of, of, of that uh, uh, initiatives, of those 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 kinds of initiatives, Catholica uh, is really uh, playing a, a very significant and important role in that sense. So, uh, Nuno, uh, besides uh, uh, um, the, the extreme um, uh, respect and admiration uh, that I have um, for you and for your team. Um, I should also make, uh, well, a public recognition of your, um, uh, the importance of your work and uh, um, the way that you were able to anticipate um, and to be ahead of time uh, with, this, with this topic. So, congratulations. Um, my mission today, um, according to, well, to the challenge that Nuno um, gave us, was to, to, to share with you our experience in, uh, in Brazil and in EDP, specifically EDP, EDP Brazil, which is the company I know uh, better. Um, uh, how, how have these companies um, deal, they dealt with, uh, uh, with COVID-19 pandemic? Um, so I, I will address, as you will see, a little bit of a uh, more global context, and then I will deep dive in our experience in Brazil. Uh, and then afterwards, I will share some thoughts um, about uh, the... Yes, I'm... Um, 
Miguel, yes. uh, Miguel, uh, Philip has already the presentation. So if you good. want, Philip will pass it, and you just need to say next. That's next, it. And Philip so will Philip, move. if you could move on to the next slide, just to give you a highlight of, I, I'm, I'm not sure what's um, the cohort we have here today, but um, just to give you a highlight of who's who's GDP, uh, who are we? Um, so we are perhaps Philip uh, initially um, mentioned. Uh, we are a multinational company present in 19 countries uh, uh, around the world nowadays and with three platforms, business platforms, one focused in renewables, um, another one in networks, uh, and the third one in client solutions and energy management. So, so these, these, these are the main building blocks, the platforms that we run today around the world in our global operations. Um, to be quite honest, I think uh, we, we, we try, we're trying to become, um, uh, well, a full-fledged multinational company, but we are still learning how to operate uh, as a global institution. So uh, this is uh, our, our footprint. Also, if you want to, um, to notice on the um, right-hand uh, corner, um, you see the, the, the weight uh, of um, our um, main geography. So, Renewables, which is the, I would say, the more global operation we run um, nowadays, uh, it's around 40, 45% of our EBITDA. Then Portugal, um, around 25, 30%. And Brazil, uh, it's more or less uh, weighing uh, 15, 20%, depending on the Forex. So um, depending on, on, on the relationship between uh, uh, Brazil uh, Real and uh, Brazilian Real and, and the Euro. Um, and then Spain to uh, to to to, um, to complement the, the, the our portfolio. So this is as a, well a very brief snapshot of VDP around the world. So now if you if you can move on, just to give you um, the sense that as Felipe mentioned, EDP is a, a, um, a long-standing uh, investor um, in uh, in Brazil. Uh, so on the next slide, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know if you are seeing that. Um, so uh, for, for, for more than 20 years, uh, operations in Brazil uh, around 1996, uh, when the, well, the public sector was privatized. Um, and since then, EDP has been growing uh, steadily and firmly um, in a very, I would say in a very conservative way, without taking too many risks. And perhaps that was um, uh, our uh, uh, risk uh, management and our uh, risk assessment, uh, perhaps part of the recipe to, I would say, I, would, I, I, was, going, I was going to call it a, a successful company, but obviously success, success is always, um, well, uh, very, um, let's say, um, um, a concept that uh, may 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 have different opinions, but uh, we consider the, we consider ourselves as, as such. Um, so, 51% is the, the current participation of VDP in in, um, in Brazil, EDP Portugal in Brazil. So, it's uh, the controlling shareholder uh, is EDP EDP uh, Portugal. But then the remaining 49% are floated in the market. Uh, we have um, the majority of our investors are US based. Uh, also, Europe, European investors as well as uh, Asian investors. Investors, uh, but for the time being, EDP uh, has a controlling stake uh, in EDP Brazil. So we, we, we can move on, and I will be very brief on on this next slide, just to give you a, a, a sense that we have an integrated value chain um, from generation to retail with the, the, with the final customer. Um, so we have businesses. Uh, across the whole value chain in transmission, in distribution. Um, and, we, and so this, this diversified, our diversified por portfolio, I think it's, uh, it's an, an important uh, um, fact uh, because it, it's, uh, it allows us to diversify risks and to have uh, it's a very diversified um, uh, risk in, a, in, in our portfolio. Uh, please move on, uh, Philippa. Um, the point is, as we all know today, uh, we are um, in the middle of uh, what we could call, the, the midst of what we could call the great lockdown. 
Um, so these, these, these are photos of uh, part of our geography, the main ones um, in Brazil and um, uh, in Spain, in the US and in Portugal. Um, and so we are basically effective on a global basis in, our, in all our geographies um, as uh, well, I, I would say all, all, all companies, all institutions around the world. Um, and specifically in Brazil, as you can see, Brazil is climbing places, climbing um, rankings uh, in the wall of fame, uh, of being in the, the unfortunate wall of fame of, uh, of, of, of COVID-19. So Brazil is already um, in, in terms of uh, deaths, uh, as well as um, confirmed cases. Confirmed cases is a little, is a little, little, little bit less, but in terms of deaths, the death toll uh, is already in, in sixth place. So it's, uh, and, and it, it's still grow, growing. So we, we are not, we haven't reached yet um, the peak uh, of the pandemic in, uh, in Brazil. So I think figures will be dire, uh, will be much dire um, in, um, in, the, in the next month, the months to come. Uh, we could, I think we can move forward. What, what, um, uh, and, and, and from now on, I will deep dive a little bit in our, uh, the management, the management, management of this crisis. We've, we've divided or we've uh, established three main priorities for, for the company and speci specifically for Brazil. Uh, I would say they are pretty much aligned also with EDP uh, as a whole, but uh, the three main Priorities are the ones that you see uh, on the screen uh, to protect our people. It was the first priority to protect the sustainability of the company, protect EDP, and also um, as important as this, these first two, to support society. So these are the three. Uh, we wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning and we go to bed at uh, uh, midnight and we have these this three uh, main priorities in our heads. Um, and I, I've just finished uh, a live uh, um, meeting with a uh, hundred uh, managers and directors of uh, EDP in Brazil. And this is a mantra. So we, we, we keep repeating this uh, every day um, and uh, with a very clear focus. And today we've been uh, looking at the, 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 the first and the second uh, um, the priorities, but we have sessions also to uh, dedicated also to, to the third priority. Um, you can see on, on the right hand side of the, of the chart um, the structure of our corporate crisis committee. So we have six subcommittees today. One focused um, on people and health, the first one, the second one on operations, the third one uh, on financial issues, the fourth one on legal and regulatory uh, agenda. Uh, also, another one in one in communication in society. So these are the six subcommittees that uh, we meet on a daily basis. Um, meetings that last uh, more or less one one and a half hour uh, to two hours, um, and uh, we take decisions on a daily basis on a timely, very timely approach. Um, uh, concerning this crisis. And uh, what we've been doing so far is uh, to, uh, to take very, um, I would say, very decisive and very uh, timely measures to assure that we, we are ahead of, ahead of, the, uh, ahead of the, the, the curve, ahead of the, the pandemic. Um, so let, let me drive you through a little bit of, um, of context on each one of these uh, six points. Uh, starting with people and health, if you if you can move on, uh, Philippa. So the first, um, um, the next one, please. So the first, um, I would say that well, the first measures that we've uh, taken were the obvious ones: um, um, restrictions to travel, to international travels, uh, restrictions to face-to-face -face meetings, and uh, um, agglomeration. Uh, of people in inside our our facilities, um, cleaning and hygiene measures, preventive ho preventive uh, home uh, office program. Um, I will show you in a minute some some detail about that. Um, the, the 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 commission commissioning of two uh, medical practitioners uh, to uh, to to give us technical uh, assessment and technical support 
in every decision we've ta we, ha we have taken concerning um, uh, health issues. Um, uh, so th th these are the kind of measures that we've taken um, in, in the beginning of the, of, uh, of the pandemic in, in Brazil. If we could move on, just to give you a... These are the, the two guys, the two me the medical practitioners that we've uh, commissioned, and they are present in, uh, you know, uh, on a weekly basis, uh, on Mondays, in our um, crisis committee, um, the, 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 the crisis committee that, that, that I was mentioning, uh, and, uh, and decisions are taken only with their supervision, only with their support. So when we, buy, when we, when we decide to buy uh, facial masks, to, well, the, the kind of, um, the, 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 the testing policies, all of that um, are uh, decisions that we take uh, always with, uh, with technical support. And uh, we're not we're not uh, doctors. Uh, we don't have any medical uh, expertise, so we tend to give that to to our specialists. The the other point I, I think it was uh, it's worth mentioning, and it's it's been it's been very helpful, um, is that we've assembled a team of 100 internal ambassadors. We've, we we're calling ambassadors to well to give a a more fancy name, but these these people are. Um, engaged um, also uh, on a daily basis um, in spreading the word, in, in taking our word in our, um, our policies, our strategies to the whole corporation. So they, they are close to, well, to the remote, to the, to the, the most remote teams. Um, and it's through them, through these 100 people that um, we assure that we are reaching uh, the whole organization. Um, it, it's difficult. Today, with, uh, without uh, physical presence and uh, based only uh, on virtual tools, uh, which are very uh, helpful and uh, we, we tend to see them uh, as, um, uh, well, a uh, very significant uh, uh, conquer of... Uh, uh, but these virtual tools, they do not replace uh, human contact and human presence. So. We, we try to give uh, with these 100 ambassadors uh, a little bit more of a warmth in, uh, in the way we are managing the whole organization. So they are close to the, the most remote teams. And in, in, in this, this slide that you are uh, seeing now, uh, two uh, references, one to the home office program. So today we have 96% of our support staff at home uh, without, in Brazil without any uh, deadline, any uh, milestone um, to return to office. Uh, in Portugal, we are starting to return to Portugal um, as, as of today and in, on the 18th of May, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start to return to Portugal, to, to, the, to the Portuguese offices. But in Brazil, as you know, uh, the pandemic is more delayed. It's, uh, the curve is it's still growing. Um, so we'll be uh, returning to the office, uh, I would say, one month or two months from now. We, we still don't know. Um, the other point, the other reference in this uh, chart, in this slide, uh, is that we've adopted the most rigorous uh, measures, uh, prevention measures. So we've distrib dis distributed uh, masks all around the country, uh, um, 100,000 masks all around the country for our electrician, uh, all the field services. They are using masks um, in, in their daily activities. So that's one, of, one example of, of our prevent, preventive measures, the way the measures that we are taking to, to, to assure that the risk of contamination is mitigated. Please, uh, Philip, we can, we can move on. Um, the other point um, is uh, we have clear notion that being at home uh, brings um, very clear very, very, no, very significant um, challenges in, in, in what comes to um, emotional, psychological, uh, even physical uh, balance. Um, and so we've devised the program, uh, a wellness and um, um, health program with external advisors, with external participation um, that we are basically providing to our 
3,000 3, employees around the, around the country um, with um, specific hints uh, on um, physical health, on financial uh, um, uh, hints, uh, uh, recommendations, um, cultural programs, psychological help, um, social initiatives, as well as, well, we still haven't done yet uh, any of this, any, any of this kind, but as well as spirit, spirituality um, matters and in in, in issues. So we've devised a, a whole uh, set of uh, initiatives um, around these six blocks to, well, to, to give more comfort and to give more um, well-being and wellness to our, to our 3,000 employees and the majority of them at home, as, as I mentioned to you. Um, so today, even uh, today, just a reference today, uh, at 5 p.m. In, um, here in, uh, in Brazil, we'll, um, we'll hold uh, a live with, um, with uh, one doctor and me medical practitioner to talk about uh, metabolism and uh, diabetes, all the, the well, things that we know that today are um, uh, risk, additional risk factors uh, besides well, the, the, the pandemic uh, uh, effects. So that, that we'll held that today with uh, Mariana, who's one of our, we'll, we'll, have, we'll, have, we'll have Mariana today to talk about that. So let's, let's move on to operation. And in, in operations, um, I think it's important to tell you that to, to obviously an, an electricity company uh, runs uh, critical um, infrastructures for, uh, for a country. So we have to be very careful, very, very attentive to our continuity plans. So all of our assets, they have individual and specific um, business continuity plans, and they are uh, all of them, they are in this scale, in this uh, ladder um, of, uh, of, uh, of risk um, from what would be a, a mild scenario to a more harsh scenario. Uh, we are taking measures depending on the level of risk that we face in each and every one uh, of, the, um, of, of our uh, assets, uh, from uh, hydropower plants, thermal power plants, All of these assets, they have a specific business continuity plan uh, addressing the, the risk situation in, in each of the regions that they are uh, allocated. Um, so the next slide is a little bit of more detail on that, but I think that's very important to, to mention uh, that we are running these, these business, business continuity plans uh, very, with very, um, in a very rigorous way. Please go, go on, please. Uh, this is an, an example. So uh, we to lock down, to confine uh, our teams um, in, um, in, in, in those assets. So in, for instance, in, in our third power plant in a region in the Northeast part of the country where uh, the pandemic uh, effects are really, really harsh and really um, uh, impactful, uh, we decided to lock down the team in, um, uh, in, the, in the site. Um, and um, adopting all and every measure, very proper conditions for them to be uh, on site. Um, but nowadays we have, uh, let's let's say, six to seven uh, assets where uh, our our teams are living there, are are confined on the on those um, on those uh, facilities. And the next slide is is, is an, an image of that. So we've. Uh, we had to, to adapt um, either with um, temporary lodging uh, or with uh, hotels and, uh, and, and um, you know, already uh, commercial uh, offer in the, in the, in the market, uh, either with uh, our proper, our, our own um, um, sites as well as uh, these uh, external facilities. We are basically uh, lodging uh, our, in some of the sites, our teams um, inside the, the, our, our facilities. So that's one very extreme measure that we, we prefer not to take it, but uh, when it, whenever it's, it's necessary, uh, we have been doing that. Please. Uh, on, 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 a, on a financial um, uh, plan, 
um, it's we know all, all of us we know that um, companies go bankrupt uh, because of their uh, cash flows because of uh, of a financial their financial situation. So it was very important for us to to assure um, adequate liquidity for for our operation. So we've basically more than doubled uh, our initial cash cash position. So we had a, an initial cash position with, with, which was already very comfortable. And we more than doubled that, and the, and we've done that uh, twofold. Um, first of all, reducing the needs um, of our obligations, of our reducing our obligations, uh, so reducing totex, capex, and opex, reducing dividends, uh, cancelling M and A pro projects, and that has accounted for let's say 1.3 billion reais. That's, uh, that's that's not relevant the figure, but. That has has accounted for part of the uh, part of the, of the of the additional resources, and the other part um, with uh, 1.7 billion with additional credit facilities. So we have today an additional three billion reais, which has doubled our initial cash position. Please go go on. So th that's very critical, as you know, uh, and that, that's the evolution of our stock price. So we had an initial uh, when it, when when the crisis hit Brazil, we had an initial. Uh, uh, plumb, uh, plumbing uh, of, uh, of the stock price, as you all see, then there is a mild recuperation, uh, and for for for, um, for the time being, uh, we we are still above when you compare with uh, uh, the stock price in December 2018. We are still above market evolution and the average average uh, uh, index in the in the in the energy sector. So we are the the red the red line. Uh, I, I hope you can see it properly. The red line and the 18.58% um, um, uh, difference vis-à-vis -vis, uh, the stock price in uh, in um, in the beginning or the end of uh, 2018, beginning of the 19. So that's the effect of, uh, as you can see, the effect uh, on, on on the stock price. We can move on, please. Uh, on legal and reg regulatory, just a word. To say you to say to you that uh, within this strategy of uh, addressing a holistic view of our crisis, we've been dealing with uh, the minister and uh, with the, uh, the minister of mines and energy in Brazil, with the regulatory agency and all the, the associations, uh, sectorial associations, um, to guarantee that uh, specific regulatory solutions are devised, specific. Uh, rescue measures are devised um, to help the, the companies in, in, in such a, a very stressful situation. So, and we are working on that um, on, a, I would say, on a 24-7 basis, uh, literally from, uh, from a night and day working with, um, with these uh, institutions to guarantee that we have a, a package of, of solutions, of uh, decisions that are taken to help the companies and to stabilize the sector in, in I would say in financial and economic terms. The, the next point is a word uh, on um, uh, supply chain. And uh, on supply chain, I would like to, to, to mention obviously that, uh, if you could move on, uh, Philippa, um, on supply chain, um, it's obvious that our dependence from China um, disrupted our operations uh, initially, so we had a one-month um, le blackout, let's say, from the Chinese, uh, the Chinese uh, suppliers. Um, we have already overcome that blackout, blackout. Um, so we are running properly and uh, smoothly uh, with um, with our um, global supply chains. But that's an issue, I would say. So it's something that we want to reflect upon. Uh, perhaps the need. To um, to make it to make these supply chains more regional and more national based than um, uh, the ones we have today. We have a large proportion of our uh, materials coming from China, coming from other regions of the country of the of the world that um, are being hit by by this crisis and will be hit in the future by other crises. Uh, who knows? So that's that that's a very important point in terms of resilience, of get, getting a resilient operation. Um, to to um, to guarantee that our supply chains are uh, robust and they they well they can face the impacts uh, in such a crisis. So and just to to end up, 
this this circle, this star, a um, couple of words about communication um, and what we've been doing. Um, EDP Brazil, as well as EDP Portugal, Spain, all the well, all our, our operations around the world. Uh, well, an extreme concern about the social uh, impact of this crisis. Um, so, what we've been doing is uh, helping um, very vulnerable uh, segments of society, um, as well as the well, the national health systems. Um, to assure that the infrastructure that we have available, not only in Portugal, but in Brazil uh, specifically, uh, it's more uh, adequate for, for, for the, the moment we are living today. So we've bought um, venti ventilators, uh, we've bought medical equipment, uh, we have donated uh, food and hygiene, uh, hygiene kits um, to assure that, well, as, as much as we can, we can help uh, these vulnerable communities uh, as, as much as possible. Uh, please go, go on. So communication is obviously one of the most important tools uh, at the moment. Uh, here are some, um, 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 some uh, examples of the global, Mr. Antonio Mishia, myself, uh, on a very timely and a very frequent and transparent way. This is uh, very important to, gar to guarantee cohesion uh, of, of the company, cohesion in a moment where um, all all, all of the, uh, the support staff is at home uh, and it's difficult to have uh, well a, a more personal interaction so uh, communication is definitely one of the most important tools we have to to tackle and to address the next one is another example and i don't i don't want to take uh, too long uh, on, on this uh, with the, the, the recurrence uh, of our communication also uh, on on social media medias and the, the next one, just to show you that uh, this is a global, a global, and I've seen Carla, Carla already, uh, also my, my colleague Carla already um, in, this, uh, in, this, in this live. Um, this is one of the, the main, um, let's say, uh, pet projects of uh, VDP, uh, our vol volunteering programs around the world in Portugal uh, in Brazil in Spain in the US uh, more than 300 people now are um, um, dedicated to help uh, communities to help uh, um, vulnerable um, families and vulnerable institutions um, with our uh, own efforts with our own participation so that's a very important uh, also uh, um, reference uh, uh, on that social uh, dimension. And the, the, the last one of this section is um, an example. Uh, this is our CEO uh, when we got the first uh, lung vent ventilators produced in Portugal uh, with a project resulting from the cooperation of, of Portuguese uh, institutions. Uh, EDP is one of, that, one of, one of those uh, Portuguese uh, um, partners. Uh, and the other one is a, is a, a photo of um, Chinese uh, ven ventilators uh, imported by EDP and CTG, our partner and shareholder in, 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 uh, in, in EDP, um, coming from China. So, and arriving uh, in, uh, in, in, the, in Lisbon Airport. Um, so it start, these are two examples of the global reach that this fight has, um, um, has um, unfolded. So it's really, um, for us a global effort and uh, we are trying to, to do our best um, to, to help society and to help uh, the most needed um, in, uh, uh, right now in, the, in this crisis. Um, with that, I think we could uh, uh, now make um, a small um, uh, interruption because the final part of my, uh, just, just another one, just to, to show you that uh, uh, we are on a daily basis controlling, monitoring, uh, a whole set of, uh, of KPIs, of key performance indicators, specifically um, assembled to the COVID-19 crisis. So we have, as you, as, as we, all, we all have uh, KPIs, uh, and we have uh, this, this star uh, with KPIs in six dimensions, uh, and we have adapted this uh, uh, framework, and we, we, we are following, monitoring on a daily basis the evolution of um, these six dimensions, um, six uh, stakeholders, if you want, um, 
we, in our uh, crisis committee. So that's um, the way we are following the, the, our, our performance on, on a daily basis. But uh, I was mentioning that perhaps it's, this is the, the moment to make a, sl a small uh, interruption in my presentation because uh, I want to end it up to end up with um, with a reflection more than uh, going forward more than uh, an experience uh, past experience. Uh, but I don't know I don't know Nunu if you want to yeah. jump in uh, and make any 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 comments or any any questions uh, at, at this moment. Miguel, fantastic. I mean, it's just amazing uh, what uh, the power of a, an institution when well uh, led uh, can take to results which are absolutely fantastic. Well, well done. And I'm sure we are still in the middle of the storm and we never know uh, whenever the storm will finish. Uh, but you are well prepared and that's all that people can ask from you. Be well prepared for, for, for the scene, that's Miguel. Yep. Uh, let, let me just let me just well I would love to open to questions but uh, because I'm very selfish let me start with one myself. Please. <laughs> we have a we we have a um, uh, last week we had a digital conference uh, on uh, sustainable development goals and COVID and all that stuff and and the the the, the, the basic doubt that most people many people have is about the SDGs. I mean, will this stop? I mean, will this uh, speed up? Uh, how do you see it, Miguel? That's a, that's, a, that's a very good question, Nunu. And, and please let me share a, a reflection about that. Before I answer to that question, let me share the first, uh, the second slide, uh, because I, I, I think that will give the context to, to the answer I, I, I want to, to give to that answer. Uh, if Philippa could uh, share the first and the second slides. Um, sorry, uh, before that, before, before, before. So, uh, no, no, no. You were there, Philippe. Sorry. After the the, the KPI uh, star. After that. Uh, after the, after that. So the, the the great question to me is either this is a risk. Sorry. Get back to the the, the previous one. Um, the great question to me is either this is a, a reset or a, um, a return. Um, and you'll see that we're we're going to claim that this should be a reset. No, no. Uh, and not a, a normal return. Uh, this is on your uh, screens the ranking of the issues, uh, the, the 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 bunch of um, uh, CEOs, authorities around the whole world uh, gathered together in Davos 2020. In Davos 2020, these were the list, the top 10 issues that uh, were considered in January 2020. That, that's, uh, that's not uh, 1990, that's 2020, uh, January. It's not even in the top 10. And the impact of infective, infectious diseases ranked as, uh, as, 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 10, as 10. So this is the vision of yeah, the most the notorious, vision. this is great. This is the vision of the most notorious, the most, um, let's say, respected, the most knowledgeable people in the world gathered in, in, in Davos. The most powerful and knowledgeable people in the world gathered in Davos. So the world, world, um, so no Yo, one knew that this could be, sorry, Yo, Felipe. And let me just reinforce your message with one word. This was January 2020, when we were, were already having an epidemic exactly. in China, spreading in China. around the world. And, exactly. still, and still, people didn't see it coming when it was already on their kind of windshield. So this is really amazing how we can be blinded by events, exactly. even when they're exactly. in, in front of us. So we, we, we were all blinded. We were all blinded. No, no. And, and, and to be quite honest, I, I make this reflection even for myself. I, I didn't see this coming. Um, how come? And the, the next slide, the next slide, uh, is is a reflection on that. Um, and, and and for me, the question is how how did uh, triple bottom line sustainability concepts fail um, so um, I would say miserably, miserably. Yeah, that's the answer for that. Are, are, are manifold, but uh, I have one, a couple of answers for that. The first point is that life preservation was never put in the center of, uh, of, these, of these priorities. You see here, um, 
social, social economics, social progress, um, environmental stewardship, economic growth, all, the, all these concepts uh, put, in, put in place in a very coherent uh, uh, framework, etc. But we've never taken uh, life preservation as um, I, I would say the, the, the central, the center um, of our uh, of our strategies, of our cons of our concerns, uh, of, of our strategic maps. Um, the other point is our tendency, and Edgar Morin. We know we all know the complexity theory of Edgar Morin. We are, we are always tend to divide, to analyze, uh, not divide to conquer, but to divide to analyze. So we tend to separate this in in, in three three um, building blocks. One thing is the economic building block, the other thing is the environmental building block, the other thing is the social building blocks. And what we know is that this is a single reality. We, we, we cannot uh, um, strip, strip out uh, different pieces of the problem because the problem is the same. The problem is a, a, well, a, a very substantial, significant, um, uh, impactful, um, this balance and balance in um, in our environment, in our uh, in the, in the world. So we we think, Nuno, that the solution for this um, is to go to the foundations, to go to the foundations uh, of a new ethics, a new ethics to life on Earth or for life on Earth. Um, and the foundations of, of, of that new ethics uh, for life on Earth, they should not be recommendations. We should not have, we executives, I'm as, as a CEO, I have a sustainability department. I have one sustainability department. And this sustainability department is very important. I, I hear them a lot, uh, but they give me recommendations. They give me uh, best practices. They give me uh, advices. Um, and what I think we should, we should consider these not as recommendations, best practices, but as, but as ethical, ethical imperatives. These should be ethical imperatives. Uh, for I think we have, we, we have a call to action now. Um, and this may sound uh, an utopia. This may sound an utopia, but uh, the point is, and if you go, 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 go to the next slide, please. The point is, uh, and I think this, this picture is, for me, is very, very, um, uh, uh, I'd say very funny because uh, we think that the curves of the pandemics uh, that the doctors are uh, regarding as well, uh, well, uh, let's say the, the hardest times that we'll we'll have to face. This is just the beginning, because what comes forward, what comes in front of us, it's mu it's much worse, um, um, and we we know that the, the impact in in our environment is really. Um, is really a, a disruption in the way humankind uh, has learned to live on Earth. So we think that this is the, 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 the time to act, the time to the time to well, to to act responsibly. No, no, no. And that's the why. That's the reason why in the beginning of this session, um, well, I praised your work. I think you are right on. You are spot on um, the, the, the the topics and the issues that we have to address not as best practices, not as, uh, as something that we should uh, um, account for, but something that should be taken as imperatives, that should be taken uh, as, as we take uh, compliance imperatives. We, you know, in Brazil, we have corruption scandals, corruption, uh, um, um, all sorts of compliance, e compliance issues. And we, when we get recommendations from compliance and from uh, internal audits, we don't take, we don't take that those recommendations uh, as alternatives as um, optional. They're not. They are imperatives. They 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 should they should be um, implemented. So uh, I think there's a a mindset, a change of mindset that we have to put in place uh, after this crisis. So to answer your questions, Nuno, um, I I think that the goals, sustainable development goals. Um, will be uh, will have to be make part of, of our uh, daily conversations, business conversations. Uh, it's inevitable to do that. Um, but to be quite honest, uh, I think today the frameworks in which we work uh, like the sustainability concept, etc, they are flawed. 
uh, for the time being, uh, and that's why that's why if you could could back could go back to the previous one, we like uh, we like this uh, this framework a lot from the Donut Donut Economics from from Kate uh, Raworth, um, and and here you have an holistic view, not only of uh, your social um, challenges as well as if as well as of uh, your uh, uh, ecological uh, what 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 they call ecological ceiling. Um, and you have an integrated view, a holistic view. Um, the point for me is that on top of that, I think we have to consider life, life, um, human life, but also uh, life as a whole as the center. And that's the reason why we propose a little bit more, uh, more, uh, if, you go, if you go forward, move forward to the next uh, slides, please. Next one, next one, next one. Yeah, this one. Um, that's why we think, we have to put life preservation as a core, um, and to to well to uh, to adopt these new ethical new ethics for life on Earth with an in, 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 with, with a holistic view. Um, and for me, that's uh, that's uh, the call for uh, a new reset, a great reset. Uh, that's what I would do if I had if I could uh, control uh, the world. Oh, like like I, like I'm mentioning in in, in this uh, such a utopic um, view, but that's what I would do, and that's what I will try to do in EDP. Um, it's to, to to make more robust, to make more uh, structure um, um, the approach that we've been following so far uh, regarding um, environmental, social inequalities, health preservation all that sort of uh, impacts that we know that our, our activity has uh, in the world. Miguel, thank you very much. I mean, if you have a few minutes, I would love to have at least one or two questions from the people, okay? Please, we have a please. few in the, in the chat, but uh, before I ask one or two from the chat, uh, anybody wants to make a, a, a raise a question with Miguel? Yes, if I can, uh, I'd like to challenge Miguel a little bit uh, with something that is uh, worrying me. Um, and I'd like to have your view as a business leader. Um, I feel that we were, a few months ago, we were uh, about to develop a new global consensus that we would need to fight inequality, that we need to preserve the environment, that climate change was the biggest threat we were facing, that could disrupt life on Earth and everyone. So I thought we were making real progress. And then came COVID. And COVID had a few effects some of them are shown in your slide. I think the slide before that shows that climate emissions suddenly dropped what seemed bit, impossible yeah. six months ago. They actually started dropping more than five or, or 10 or not, not only being stable, but actually dropping. Uh, pollution yeah. started retreating for some time. Um, and so on one hand, we may global uh, climate change issues may lose priority. And because we will be facing so much uh, unemployment, so much bankruptcies of companies, so much economic distress and social upheaval. There could be kind of a, a focus back into the core in the survival mode. And some of these aspirational goals and new mindsets could be put aside in the harsh realities of surviving the crisis. So we could, uh, in trying to survive, we could lose part of the momentum we were doing in different fronts. Uh, do you see that as a risk? Do you see signals of that? And how can we not allow this to happen? So what should we do uh, to fight this possible scenario, which I think is a likely scenario, actually. Like scenario. Philippe, that, that's a, well, uh, I think a very uh, legitimate question, a legitimate uh, reflection. If, if you could go back to the, the slide Philippe mentioned with, um, uh, with emissions, that's, that's the one. Um, what we've seen so far, when we go back to the nine, nine, uh, um, 1900, uh, to, to, the, to, pre to the previous century, what you see is whenever a, a crisis hits the world, um, the, well, the moment after, um, you get back to normality. You get back to, the, to your, uh, to your um, previous track. So you see the Great Depression, the Second World War, the second oil shock, 
um, financial crisis in 2011. Um, whenever you have a crisis, the return is even, you can see in the financial crisis that was the case, the return is even more, um, I would say, more uh, vigorous, more impactful. So I suspect, Philip, that you're right, that um, we're not going to take this opportunity unless there is um, a critical mass, mass around the world uh, in uh, business leaders, uh, in politicians um, that will revert, that will um, uh, avoid that uh, normal return to, well, to what we call now the new, the new normal. But the new normal is to get back on track and to keep on uh, emitting uh, uh, tons of giga gigatons of, uh, of CO2 to, to the atmosphere. So um, I think your concern is right. I think people like myself and uh, other business leaders, we have a responsibility. I take that responsibility on a personal level. I know that Mr. Antoni Mishia, the CEO of EDP, also does the same. Uh, as you know, we are one of the, the companies um, that were uh, uh, that participated uh, in, in the global agreement for a 1.5 uh, degrees pathway. Um, I guess 80, 80, 80, 80 uh, great companies around the world did that. Um, but it depend, it, I think it's depending, dependent on, uh, on us. Uh, on an individual individual level and an, on a collective level. So I hope I hope that um, politicians around the world, specifically uh, in the developed the developed countries, um, they could sense this risk, and we could take this opportunity to to make a, a, a different approach to this re recovery, uh, to make it a green recovery, not a well. A, Um, idealism, uh, and uh, and you mentioned correctly that this is this, this crisis has a very severe social impact, um, and there are people starving around the world. Here in Brazil, there are people starving. Um, we we cannot uh, underestimate that the impact of that. So let's see let's see how how will the the, the world cope with uh, with this challenge. Um, I have I still have the idealism of thinking that we could do it in a different way. But uh, I, don't know, I don't know if uh, that critical mass will be sufficient to, uh, to overcome uh, the tsunami that will come after this, this, this pandemic, which will well, try to, to bring us to the, to the new normal, which is basically very similar, similar to the previous normal. Thank you. Nuno, some more questions? Yeah, we have another yeah, question another in question. the chat. No, no, would you like to address the question from yeah, uh, Sandra? Chat. So I'm, I'm yes. not going to ask all the questions because Miguel, I know that you have uh, been very generous in. Yeah, where we are. I didn't, I didn't hear you. I don't know if you, if you posed the question. Yeah, yeah, that's the question that I would like uh, to ask Miguel because it's a, it's a good question sort of to finish, which is, as a leader, Miguel, this pandemic, your leadership style. No, I'm, I, the question is, as a leader, do you feel that this pandemic will change your leadership style? That's a very, very, very good question. Uh, and, and let me uh, have, uh, I have a, a last, a, a one last slide. Uh, one last slide, uh, and I will use that slide uh, to well to answer to you about that. Um, yeah, that's one. I, I, I see. No, sorry, that, that's the the video. I, I think we don't we won't have time to to pass it. Um, I see um, five imperatives, Nuno, um, for uh, our leadership challenges going forward. Um, and 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 there is a here there is a flavor of, of the energy sector. You'll see. But these are the five, five imperatives for me uh, right now. Uh, the first one is to give proper attention to. The second one is to make a faster energy, energy transition. I, I think we have to do that. Um, the third one is to use digitalization as a, uh, well, a core strategy 
uh, for uh, our the whole value chain of our businesses and our relationship with customers, our relationship with people, our our all our all our relationships they have to be digitized. Uh, the, the the fourth one is flexibility. Um, we tend to see um, work with relationships with a certain uh, rigidity, with, with a certain uh, stiffness, uh, and I think we we we, we must departure to a much more flexible way of interpreting um, new models of work, new models of um, contractual relationships. Um, and so we have to take that very seriously into account. And the, and the, the fifth one is options, how to deal with cyber, uh, cyber risks um, and uh, cyber attacks, um, and how to guarantee that your operation uh, is really resilient to to this kind of impacts so if you want this is my this is the five topics that i will put in my agenda uh, to to force myself um to adapt my well my my strategic map okay um, obviously beneath this um, agenda there is one thing that i i, I mentioned here which is a new ethics, new ethics for, for, for life on earth, uh, which I firmly believe. Uh, and, and having said that, no, no, um, and going directly to your question, I think we'll have definitely to adapt uh, our leadership style and um, the way uh, we manage, the way uh, we deal basically with um, uh, these, these, these challenges, um, with people, with risk. I think this, this the, 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 well, the environmental and social challenges, people uh, and risk in, 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 in a more uh, global uh, vision um, will uh, we'll, we'll have a very, uh, say, very central uh, place um, in our strategy and our um, agenda going forward. So I think. We, this is the moment to uh, to to adjust and the moment to to reinvent ourselves to deal with, with a new normality thank you miguel uh, give anybody a last question does anybody want to ask a last question to miguel uh, nobody has one i can ask sandra sandra was moving okay. now sandra, don't. sandra. yes sandra, go ahead uh, so first of all thank you for answer the question it was my first question and i'm always challenging nunu uh, to give us examples of companies who are placing sustainable development at the center of their strategy and ceo so thank you nunu for bringing one very good example thank you miguel for sharing um your 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 strategy and it's very good to see that your leaders leadership style is aligned with what the world needs. So my first question was, if you will mm -hmm. change your leadership style, but the other one is, okay, EDP is a good example in managing sustainable development. Uh, mm -hmm. but why do you think there is a perceived shortfall in leaders uh, to champion sustainability initiatives within business and organizations? Sandra, thank you very much for your, for your comments and for your question. Um, I think I, Nuno is, uh, I remember Nuno, Nuno's uh, leadership style and I remember um, the way he engages teams, etc. We all know um, that we are driven by incentives. Uh, we are lead, driven by um, uh, alignments. Um, and today, when you, when you, when you, when you, tra when you trace that, uh, value chain of incentives um, you see that for the time being sustainability uh, and these environmental imperatives are not yet uh, in the center of the um, financial world mm -hmm. so we know that e e esg is becoming uh, and is growing in importance uh, even in wall street and in city in london so everyone is paying more attention to esg Are, today they are very rigorous uh, analyzing uh, companies in, in that sense 
um, specifically in Scandinavia, they, they are very eager uh, and, and very uh, rigorous about, about ESG, but that's not the average. The average today is still, as you know, Profit. driven by cash, <laughs> driven by profitability, driven by results, driven by EPS. I have um, dozens uh, of meetings every week with the investors and there is no single question about ESG. The, the question is uh, EPS, uh, dividend, dividend, dividends, uh, payout ratios, uh, cash flows, uh, profitability, all that jargon yeah, that we know yeah. that's important for the financial world. So for the time being, the financial world, which, is, which obviously uh, supports businesses um, with, with, with uh, resources, uh, mm -hmm. with funding, Yes. Um, so as long as incentives are not aligned, I think it's difficult to, um, to bridge that shortfall, as you mentioned. Um, but uh, I know that uh, one day we'll get there because at an individual level, we know that there are numerous examples and Nuno shares those examples uh, every week um, you know, on, their, on his um, um, very um, uh, useful contents that, that he usually shares with us. Um, there are people making making a difference in the world right now. Uh, leaders of the, of the financial world, like Larry Finkel and other yeah. guys, are really uh, driving um, driving the the world in a different yeah. direction. But for the time being, the majority are not Larry Fingers, are, are, are other guys. Yes. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you very much. Philippa, last Thank you very question. Much for your, for your time. And now, Philippa, is really the last question. Please. Thank you. Uh, so, Miguel, um, I would like to ask you uh, in these times and in times of crisis, when the PL is at risk, uh, how can a company stand by its values and be a responsible business? How can you manage this? That's, that's a very, very good question, uh, Philippa. Um, I think uh, reality is, is complex. Uh, we cannot um, reduce reality to one single objective or to one single approach. Uh, it's a very reality as we know it, life as we know it, the world as we know it, are, are complex um, uh, bodies, are complex situations. So I think a company has to, to be um, um, simultaneously focused on assuring um, its uh, financial and economic equilibrium. Without cash, we close doors. So that's, that's, that's uh, uh, as blunt as, as it is. It's, it's like this, we, we, with no cash, you close doors. So you have to assure that you have um, proper and healthy um, financial and economic situation, but that's not incompatible with uh, your social uh, uh, objectives, with your social responsibility, with, your, uh, um, your, with, with these new ethics that I was mentioning. So both, both things, they can coexist. And that's what, what I think uh, we should do is to, to, to cater to all those uh, needs um, from both realities. So it's two, two sides of the same coin. Um, from one side, you have to, to assure that you have funds to pay your taxes, to pay your people, to, to run your business, to pay your suppliers. And without money, you don't do, you don't do that. Um, and on the other side, you have to guarantee that your uh, practices, your policies, they are balanced and they, they well, they're not um, harsh and aggressive to the, the world around us. So um, I think that's not, uh, for me, that's not a contradiction. We, we, we tend to, to see the, those uh, as um, um, uh, contrasting, contrasting realities. To me, that's the same reality with two faces and we have to, to cater to, to those two realities um, on an equal, on equal standing. That's my, my perspective. Miguel, thank you very much. Uh, you really left us with uh, two or three very inspirational thoughts. 
I take it to the, the great reset. Um, I, I really like the idea of the great reset, and especially the idea of um, trying to summarize what you said at the first answer, which is the SDGs as a ethical imperative. If you think about the SDGs as an ethical imperative, it leads you to a, a different mental shift, I guess. So that's, that's a great one. I just finished, you, you were talking and I was, um, uh, last week I saw a great interview with Paul Pullman, which is a guy I consider a lot, former mm -hmm. CEO. Of. And he said something in the, along the lines of, what we are living is really a huge tragedy. But the bigger tra tra tragedy would be not to take opportunity of this thing to make what you now call the great reset. Great reset. That will be an even bigger tragedy. No, no doubt about that. So, uh, Miguel, I'm really uh, keen to tell you thank you very much. Obrigado. Thank you. Fantastic. Obrigado, thank you. And I will leave to to Philip to 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 close it. Thank you very much, Nuno. It was no, a pleasure there's... to be here with you. There's not much for me to say. Uh, I take uh, Nuno's call. Never waste a good crisis to make the change that, that's needed and that's uh, more than needed. It's an imperative. Again, thank you very much, Miguel, for sharing your view, your work with us on sustainability. I think we, we, will, we are much richer and also inspire. And thank, thank you, you all to the team of the center for putting together these talks. Thank you. Thank you I will just ask Manon, Manon, please unmute everybody so that everybody can say thank you directly to Miguel. <laughs> obrigado, Miguel. Obrigado, Nuno. Thank you all. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye. Obrigado. Bye -bye. obrigado. Bye -bye. obrigado. Bye -bye. obrigado. 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 <laughs>